this is the Provoke Brawn, here to show you how to connect and wire Montex RX and AX 120mm and 140mm RGB fans. I'm going to show you how to set these fans up easily and the logic for doing so, as well as a tool to use, which is a controller that you can buy separately that will make your life a lot easier. So I'm going to start with the initial wiring of the fans and the logic of how they work. And then I'm going to go into more depth on other things, including using that controller. And I'll link to the things that you need down in the description as well, so you can find out more. Now, Montex RX and AX fans come with two cables on them, one for power and one for RGB lighting. These connections are obviously quite different. One has, as you can see, just three pins on it and a little arrow on there. And the other one has a little notch on it, which allows you to slot it into place. Now, this logic will work for all the fans, whether they're a reverse blade or a standard blade, and also 120mm and 140mm. First of all, we're going to look at motherboard connections, because this logic explaining it will make life a lot easier. For the RGB connection, we need the 3-pin 5-volt RGB header, which you should usually find on your motherboard in various different spots. There are a number of them located around. Hopefully, you've got at least two of these that you can plug the connection into. So the cable from that will plug into the motherboard. Obviously, I'm demonstrating this now really easily outside of the build so that you can see the logic of how it works, but you would actually do this once everything's installed. The other cable is for the fan power, which allows the fan to spin. And for that one, you're looking for the chassis fan or system fan headers, marked CHA fan and SYS fans. You should find them scattered around your motherboard, top, bottom, side, in various different locations and with numbers on them as well. You plug the other cable into those and you'll notice there's a little notch on there that allows it to slot into place. This is a four pin connection. Plug that in and then your fan will have power. Now in theory, you can see it's really easy to wire one fan. You've got one fan cable for RGB and one for the fan power. However, obviously, once you start to add more and more fans to this system, you will soon fill up the ports, both the chassis fan headers and the RGB connectors. I've now run out of the 5R RGB connectors and I've only got three fans plugged in. The solution here is something like this Thermalrite ARGB fan hub, which allows you to connect both fan power and RGB to one single device and then control it from your motherboard. But more importantly, it just makes plugging in everything a lot easier and neater because you can connect this at the rear. You'll see that there are ports for both the RGB connector and the fan power connector, the same ones we just applied to the motherboard. And then on either end, you have a couple of other cables. Now, this controller allows you to control eight fans plugged into it quite simply, as we've just done. And then you can also connect it directly to the motherboard with the same logic. So you'll see on one end it has an ARGB input and a PWM input. So what you need is the cables that are included with this. And I'll link to everything in the description below. You'll see that you have the 5 volt RGB connector with the same 3 pin logic on it that plugs into the controller. And then the other end of that plugs into the motherboard. And then the PWM input, which is the power cable, plugs in at this end as well. And that plugs into the same system fan headers and chassis fan headers I've already shown you. The other important point is you need the same power cable that you use for hard disk drives and SSDs, which is the flat SATA power connector. That plugs into the port marked SATA on your power supply unit. And this is a daisy chain cable that's usually used for SSDs and hard disk drives, but also other things like fan controllers, RGB controllers and more. So you plug that cable into there and then the other end of it plugs into the other end of the controller. Now, it's essential that you do this because it does require power because obviously you're controlling a lot of fans from one little control box. You'd then plug in, once they're wired and installed in the case, all the different fans to the connectors on here. Obviously the RGB connector and then the fan power connector for each of them. You can only plug them in one way, so pay attention to how you're doing it because you will find, obviously, you've only got three pins on the 5-volt header, and then the other one has some notches on it too. So you may find it a bit fiddly, but you can plug in a load of fans into this controller, and that means you then don't have to worry about plugging them directly into the motherboard, which makes life a lot easier. Fill it up, and you now have control for a load of different fans, which is hopefully ideal for your case. You can get other controllers. This is just one example. I'll link to another video I did in the description, which will help. But you can see that we can now power and get the RGB lighting sorted for these fans with relative ease. 
Now, obviously, showing you that outside the case. Here it is at the end of the build. The fans are installed. And then we go through and make sure everything's plugged in to this controller. You do need to find somewhere for it. But the benefit of this is you can hide the cables from the fans at the rear rather than having them all sticking out of the motherboard. You can nestle this controller away in your case. And you can then make the connections to the motherboard for the 5 volt connector and the fan power. So you can still control the fan speed from your motherboard software and from the BIOS. And the RGB lighting can be controlled that way as well. Now the way you control the RGB lighting is going to vary, but do remember to plug in that SATA power connection, otherwise your fans just won't work. So if that's not spinning up, that's the reason why. Now you can usually control your RGB lighting with RGB software. In this case, I'm using ASRock's Polychrome Sync RGB because it's an ASRock motherboard, but you might use MSI's Mystic Light or Gigabyte's Control Center other various different RGB things in there. You can then control various different effects and you can also select the channel that you've connected it to. So that would be the five volt connector that you plugged into on the motherboard. You can set it so you can tell it which one you're trying to control. This software usually will also control other things like the RGB RAM, for example, RGB lighting on your motherboard and any other connected peripherals as well. An alternative to this is to use Signal RGB. Now, Signal RGB is a free download that you can get in Windows, which is very clever because it allows you to control the RGB lighting not only of your fans, but also everything else in the case. So, for example, it will work with your graphics card and it will work with other things outside your case as well, like your mouse and keyboard potentially. So you can sync the lighting across loads of different devices. This is also useful if you've mixed and matched fans from other brands to go along with your Montec fans. So you can see here, for example, that I've got some Enzo XT fans in this build and you'll notice the RGB lighting from the Asus graphics card is also lighting up. You can change between the various different settings in there and then easily control all this. This is done with a thermal right controller being plugged into the 5 volt connection but anything plugged into the motherboard's 5 volt RGB header will let you do this. So if you want to plug some of the fans directly into it still you can do that so it means if you've got more than the controller can handle you could use the system fan headers and the RGB connections that I showed you earlier on, combine the two and still get some RGB syncing going as well. So there are different ways of doing it, but using a controller just makes your life a lot easier. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, check out the links in the description to find out more and see related content, including to my videos on the King 95 that you're seeing here. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.